Can the value of gold go to zero? What if silver becomes worthless? You know, I get these questions a lot and whether you're new to precious metals or long time stacker, I'm sure you have thought about this for quite a bit as well. Now, the short answer is no. It is not possible for gold and silver to crash to nothing and it's because of two words, intrinsic value. I'm Sean and in this video, we are going to be talking about why gold and silver is the ultimate instrument to store wealth and why these precious metals will outlast every other asset on planet Earth. And if you stay to the end, I'll reveal what the floor price of gold and silver actually is today and why they will likely won't drop below that level. Now, in this channel, we cover everything about gold and silver. So if you want to learn more about investing in precious metals, be sure to subscribe to the channel. It helps us grow and I really appreciate it. Let's dive straight in. So you probably know by now that gold and silver were used as money for thousands of years from ancient Rome all the way to 1971 when Nixon dropped the gold standard. Now, people didn't just use the metals as currency because it was convenient. It's because gold and silver is the perfect form of money. Now, the Greek philosopher Aristotle defined what good money has to be. Firstly, they have to be durable, which means they cannot fade or corrode over time. They have to be portable and hold a significant amount of value, which is what gold and silver does. So this one ounce gold coin holds around $1,800 of purchasing power today, while this silver ounce is worth around $23. And they have to be fungible, which is the third thing, which is what precious metals are, right? So a gold coin that is from Africa has the same value as one that is minted in America. And finally, they have to have intrinsic value. And that means by itself, it has to be useful to the world and be rare. And this is why the paper dollars that we have in our wallet isn't exactly good money. It is simply a promise to pay and it's just backed by faith. Now, gold and silver are different. They have real intrinsic value, which is why they can never really fall to zero. They are the perfect form of money, especially gold. So what actually makes gold the ultimate form of money and the ultimate store of value, right? And I think it's just one simple reason, right? And it's because of one property that very few metals on a periodic table can claim. And that is, gold is the most unreactive metal in the world. And that means that it will not tarnish, it will not corrode, and essentially, it will last forever. And when we combine it with its other properties, such as being very malleable and being very ductile, malleable meaning basically you can beat it into a very thin sheet, ductile, that means you can actually stretch it into a thin wire. And that means that gold can actually be turned into any shape imaginable. And that is why gold's main purpose today is to really preserve well whether it is in the form of a gold coin or a gold chain around your neck. And if we really look at gold's demand, we can see that around 50% is used for jewelry. Now, this is very important and that's because globally, everyone sees gold as valuable. And that is truly the beautiful thing about gold, right? So whether I'm in the United States, China or India, people understand that gold represents wealth. I don't have to explain myself and tell a long story telling people that it has worth. All you need to do is to take one look and you know, right? You don't need to check on an app, you don't need to check a stock market chart to know that it is valuable. And this is one of the key reasons why gold will always have value, right? It's because of this silent agreement across the millennia from people all over the world, from all walks of life, that gold is actually money, right? Somewhere deep within our psychology, we all acknowledge that gold provides us with security and people will still want it today or years down the road. Now, it's not really going to be easy uh, to change that kind of mindset, right? Gold is a signifier of wealth. It shows status and symbolizes the heavens really in many cultures, right? And here's the interesting thing. If you rewind back to history, you can see that the greatest works of art has been gilded in gold King Tut's mask is made with gold and there's even a temple that in India that's covered in pure gold. I'm not kidding guys. I mean, just take a look. It looks insanely beautiful. And I believe that this trust in gold is reflected in the way that central banks across the world are holding gold as part of their reserves. Now, this is a very important point I want to make, right? So central banks, they buy gold essentially is because they want an asset that retains its value and it's no accident that they chose gold. You have to think about it a bit deeper. Would governments trying to protect their nation's wealth buy an asset that might go to zero, that has a chance and that has a risk of it be becoming worthless? And I don't think so, guys. You know, you know, the powers that be, right, they kind of know what real money is. And deep down, they know that there's no better store of value than wealth than gold. 
And it's because of this central bank buying that will keep the price of gold rather steady, right? And not every central bank out there is as stupid as the Bank of England that sold all of their gold at the bottom of the market in 2001 at just $275 an ounce, right? Central banks, uh, for the most part, they're actually quite smart. So if the price suddenly plummets, right? If gold suddenly drops, it drops from, let's say, $1,800 down to $1,600 or $1,400, it will likely be possible that central banks all over the world will jump in at a chance to buy tons of gold at a discount. And people in countries like India, you know, the people in India and China, especially India, they love gold. And if they see the price of gold start to drop, they will start to buy lots of gold, you know, to adorn themselves with jewelry, bangles, necklace. And the spike for jewelry demand will really spike up the price for gold as well and that's the beauty of gold right there will be a floor price that if it reaches the whole world will start snapping it up so let's talk about silver for a bit so what about silver right why won't it fall to zero you know central banks aren't really holding silver and it's almost 80 times less valuable than gold but silver is a store of wealth too and it will always retain its value but it just won't be because it is a precious metal right now the true value of silver lies in it being an industrial metal now if we look at silver's demand we can see that over 68 percent of it is used industrially and that's because of silver having incredible properties that no other metal actually have right and this include having the highest electrical conductivity and thermal conductivity which is even better than copper and gold and this allows it to be used in almost every facet of industry, right? Let's say we were to strip away um, all silver from the world. You know, essentially your car won't start. I don't think a plane can fly. Your cell phone will stop working. And honestly, we can kiss goodbye to the green revolution, right? Making solar panels won't be possible. And Elon Musk's electric vehicle dream won't come true. And currently, right? I did a little bit of research on this and I realized that uh, Tesla actually uses around 2 ounces of silver so there's around 2 of these silver coins uh, actually being used throughout the car and if we multiply it by over a billion vehicles today which will eventually transition to electricity we can see that the industrial demand for silver will rise for decades just from this alone right but let me uh, take another angle, right? Let me just play the devil advocate here. Now, what if somehow the price of silver plunges and just free falls? You know, maybe it's um, market manipulation or people start dumping their silver. What really happens right now? If that happens and silver goes low enough, trust me on this, the industries will replace most of their copper demand, most of their copper use with silver. And it's just because that silver is much more superior, right? It conducts heat, uh better it conducts electricity better you know a lot of the copper wirings will re be replaced by silver and that is why it will drive up silver's price if it goes too low and once again set a bit of a flaw on how much silver can actually drop now so far we are just talking about the demand side of gold and silver how gold and silver is being used who will want gold and silver but the supply side of the story actually gets better right now, we all know that gold and silver isn't conjured up from thin air. It is not printed into existence like how the Fed prints dollars. It has to be dug out from the ground and refined into pure metal that we can wear, use or invest in. And that isn't free. Now, mining costs are continually rising as getting precious metals out of the ground is getting harder and more costly, right? You know, the global all-in mining cost for gold today, I think it's around uh, $1,067 an ounce while silver's mining cost is around $11.17 an ounce. So just think about it, right? That means if the price of gold and silver were to ever fall below those numbers, exploration and mining would immediately stop, right? You know, no company in the right mind will want to operate at a loss and this will start to shrink the supply of gold and silver. And this forces the prices of gold and silver back up, you know? You know, it's simple supply and demand. If you cut away part of the supply, the prices of gold and silver if demand stays the same will start to go up so if you're holding gold and silver you can rest easy knowing that more or less there's a floor price of around a thousand dollars for gold 
and $11 for silver. So the thing is, when you are investing in precious metals, you got to understand that it's one of the most volatile markets today. You could see them rise by 10% tomorrow and then suddenly crash 20% next week. And the key here is to really have diamond hands with the metals and ride out the storm. Now, gold and silver has outlasted governments, nations and businesses. They will outlast you, they will outlast me and they will never fall to zero. And that is why you can confidently stack them for generations to come. So there you have it guys. I believe you are approaching a decade where the world is slowly waking up to precious metals. And whether you are stacking it to build your wealth or an investment to get rich, I believe that gold and silver is a great place to be. And even if it doesn't return as money, they will still have tremendous value and intrinsic worth. So let me know what you think. Do you believe that gold and silver could actually fall to zero? Or do you think that the metals will continue to protect your wealth for decades to come, 100 years to come? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe for more gold and silver videos. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you soon.